Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Q2 FY24 results conference call of Vishnu Chemicals Limited hosted by MK Global Financial Service. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Meet Vora from MK Global Financial Service. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome the management and thank them for uh, giving us this opportunity to host them. Uh, we have with us today Mr. Siddhartha Cherukuri, Joint Managing Director, Mr. Hanuman Bantali, Vice President, Finance and Strategy. I shall now hand over the call to the management for the opening remark. Thank you. And over to you, sir. Thank you, Meet. Uh, good morning, everyone. We welcome you all to this earnings call update. Um, I will start with the financial performance achieved during the second quarter of this financial year. The consolidated total income increased by 3% sequentially from 303 crores in Q1 FI24 to 311 crores in Q2 FI24. On the consolidated level, the gross margins in Q2 FI24 was consistent at 45.1% compared to 46.3% in Q1 FI24. The gross profit at a consolidated level remained unchanged at 139 crores in Q2 FI24. The stable margin uh, uh, trend on the gross profit level remains uh, uh, in line with our historical uh, range of uh, 45%. The consolidated EBITDA in Q2 FI24 was 49 crores compared to 53 crores in the previous quarter. The lower EBITDA, as you can see, was due to increase in fixed cost and conversion cost by nearly 5 crores, which was particularly related to post-operative expenses in the newly commissioned Varium project. The pack for this quarter was 24 crores compared to 29 crores in the previous quarter, a reduction of 16% on a sequential basis. Uh, with an ongoing focus on maintaining our financial health and stronger balance sheet, the company reduced its absolute debt by 63 crores during the first six months on a console level. Uh, we are happy to share that we have achieved a debt to equity level of 0 0.5 times as on 30th September 2023 compared to 0 0.9 times as on 31st March 2023. The company expects to reduce its finance cost from Q3 FI24 onwards. On the working capital, the company achieved a current ratio of 1.6 times at a consolidated level. This is well above the industry average. The receivable days of the company stood at 49 days during the quarter round. Now I will request the joint managing director of our company Mr. Siddhartha Cherukuri to comment on the highlights of the chromium chemistry as well as variant chemistry. Over to you. Thank you, Hanuman. Good morning, everyone. Uh, wishing you uh, a very happy Diwali and season greeting. I'd like to highlight on the chromium chemical industry. The demand for chromium chemical remains robust with encouraging volume offtake during the quarter. Standalone domestic and export sales grew by 6 and 7% on a quarter on quarter basis. On the raw material front, chromo prices remain at elevated levels and reach their highest level in Q2 FY24. This leads to moderate increase in cost of goods sold at a standalone level during the quarter. Company uses chromo for its, for its chemical manufacturing. A stable and consistent supply of raw material is critical for our operations as it minimizes the risk of supply disruptions or price fluctuations in the open market. In the recent years, the company has taken steps to reduce its reliance on external procurement of raw material. In this direction and spirit, the Board of Vishnu Chemicals has approved to acquire Chromo Reserve and a processing plant as a long-term strategy. I'd also like to throw some light on our barium vertical. We have achieved break-even in newly acquired barite beneficiation plant in the very first quarter of the operation. 
Quarter 2 FY24 had higher fixed costs due to integration of newly commissioned plants and stabilization of garite beneficiation facility acquired in FY24. The newly commissioned plant of facility barium sulfate has an installed capacity of 30,000 tons per annum and is expected to reach over 50% utilization by second half of FY24. The output has received incredible reception from the organized customers in India and overseas markets. Largely in the powder coating and automotive paint industry and battery application. Our plant and process is built to meet stringent quality requirement of multinational paint companies globally. And it's a clear import replacement. Now I request we start the floor open. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Rohit Sinha from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> thank you for taking my question, sir. Uh, so, uh, first of all, on this uh, uh, mine acquisition, so basically just wanted to understand so, uh, what would be the timeline uh, when, I mean, we should expect the acquisition of mine to be completed and, and uh, when should we see the actual benefit to reflect on numbers? Good morning, Mr. Rohit. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, right now, the board has only proposed to uh, uh, send, uh, has approved this proposal to acquire the mine as well as the processing plant. Uh, the company is evaluating uh, this, and it's pretty early right now uh, to give a comment on the timeline. Uh, we are still busy with our capex plants and the chromium chemicals, and uh, this would take nearly a year from now to uh, fully uh, uh, get completed. Okay. okay. So what would be the uh, rough uh, capital outflow for this? Um, so we have just taken a board approval. We have not evaluated the assets uh, or, you know, not engaged uh, with any parties as of now. So it will be uh, very early. But uh, from where we see, you know, this won't be uh, a major capital outflow. Because Cromor mines globally are, uh, you know, uh, very explosive and uh, not... Uh, uh, not in line with the other mines that are acquired. So it's more to do with uh, how the processing plant works and how we can uh, take the mine from the ground, uh, take the promo from the ground and process it and get it to a level where we can use it for our own facility. So it's very little to do with the cost of mine because it's more to do with the cost of replacement uh, of setting up a processing plant on our own versus you know, getting it started through an inorganic expansion. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, just to uh, take it further, I mean, we recently did a QIP and uh, uh, money was majorly for the use of uh, expansion of our existing uh, capacities. So, with this uh, uh, acquisition online, so would there be any uh, I mean, uh, how we should be basically funding, going to fund this uh, capex or it should be from maybe from the internal accrual. And if you could also uh, briefly highlight if uh, at all uh, possible that what kind of benefit on raw material uh, uh, prices we should uh, expect, especially when we are seeing that raw material prices are uh, reaching the highest level. Um. I'll first answer the second part, that on the raw material front, uh, uh, there are two parts to it. We have done a lot of work uh, with respect to uh, reducing the cost uh, on the raw material side and also uh, de uh, decreasing our uh, reliance on external procurement of certain raw materials, both in chromium chemicals as well as barium chemistry. Uh, but we have uh, uh, not done any work on the chromo front. So this will be the first step towards, uh, you know, taking uh, 
control of the supply side of the chromo and uh, this would also help us in the longer run as we keep increasing the capacities uh, of sodium dichromate and its derivatives uh, second aspect is uh, like you asked about the uh, capital outflow and the use of qip funds um, the capital outflow in the qip is majorly for the you know as as specified in the qip uh, placement document was for reduction of working capital and debt which we have done already uh, in the first 6 months our overall debt has come down uh, our overall long term borrowings has come down by nearly 63 crores and uh, we have also reduced our working capital uh, requirement during this period so any further capital that we would require uh, for inorganic uh, expansion would be generated over a period of time for an internal pool and we also have access to uh, some portion of general corporate funds uh, from the qip portion okay okay uh, so uh, so this is from my side as of now i'll come back in queue thank you okay thank you thank you next question is from the line of pritesh cheda from lucky investment managers please go ahead yeah hi uh, just wanted to check on the chrome side of the business uh, you know uh, between the last three four quarters now uh, is it lot to do with the chrome or uh, chrome or uh, uh, rm which is shrinking the gm or uh, do you want to call out something else uh, and uh, you know between the last three four quarters now what will be the utilization of the chrome asset of i think 70000 capacity right uh, are the volume stable or there is any changes in the volume that we see in the last three four quarters because your peak was at about 300 320 crores and uh, now you are at about 260 260 to 70 crores yeah good morning pratesh this is good morning uh, good morning to the doctor uh well uh on a quarter on quarter basis uh we have seen a volume increase in chromium uh in terms of stc output produced however uh, you know there has been a decrease in gross margin uh, uh down about 4% mainly on account of uh, chromo price increase mm. uh followed by that uh, you know our absolute ebitda has also come down from on a y on y basis but what we are see, uh, what we are seeing is this is mainly on account of value correction uh, across the derivatives uh, on a, uh, versus what we have seen uh, on a y on y basis in general so uh, what value correction on yy means uh, drop in the chrome or product realizations yes for the same volume correct, correct. or a, or a lower volume no, for the same volume for the same volume okay so then for a same volume it means that the price correction in the chrome uh, the product line is about 14 15% 15%. correct correct okay and i'm sure we all we all are witnessing across the industry in general uh, mm-hmm. well uh, moving forward uh, what we are seeing is i mean we are very happy to share that you know the co2 expectation what we have done is progressing well we are currently operating at 75% and uh, moving forward by this uh, by end of this uh, year or, or by or by q4 of FY24, we are expecting it to operate at 90%, and it's been very steady. We're very happy with the output overall, and it's definitely going to support our EBITDA margins as we move towards end of this financial year. Okay. And uh, like you say, we are coming back to the Crow mode. Uh, we have seen this cycle even into 2016. and this time it has been relatively longer than what we have anticipated and uh, there were some challenges to pass on the price increase uh during the quarter 2 uh but uh, uh what what we are with, uh, what we are seeing is again uh, there has been a uh, better inquiries uh, i mean uh, i mean instead of you know when customers were looking at a monthly or bi-monthly basis 
uh, I, I, what there, I think there has been a, a more clarity that you know, uh, you know, the prices have come down to the levels where they will stay or they will, uh, you know, eventually go up. So people are talking about fixing up for a half, you know, quarterly or half yearly basis. So we are seeing a lot more inquiries and and we are going back to them with an increased pricing and we have already uh, made uh, uh, some adjustments, upward adjustments in uh, some accounts for quarter four. So we are hoping some better realization during quarter four of the financial year. And also we are seeing also we are seeing some cooling down in promo prices. Uh, I mean, this is based on the index what we have in our hand and and uh, the, I think the outlook is it's going to soften a little bit uh, more towards early next year. Uh, can you comment on the movement in chrome ore prices in the last uh, three quarters? What what is the movement and what it is today now? Uh, the chrome ore prices have uh, I I can give you a percentage. Cannot do it. The, the the prices have increased approximately by about twenty five percent in the last three quarters. Correct. In the last quarter or last two three quarters. Quarter. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, I just have a couple of more questions. One on the barium side, uh, between standalone and consolidated, what we see is still the 30,000 ton uh, capacity of the barium sulfate flowing through the numbers, right? The yeah. barium precipitate capacity, where, when it is getting operational? Uh, well, it is already operational, and as we speak, we are producing, if we are operating at about 40%. Uh, I mean, uh, we already received few approvals and vendor codes from some of the big a uh, few of the big paint manufacturers. And as we go towards quarter four, uh, we are expecting the operating level to be at the level of 60 percent. Okay. And even the exports have started; uh, things are moving on that front as well. Uh, in terms of, I'd like to throw some light on the volumes as well. I mean, if we compare Q1 to Q2, our volumes on a uh, on a combination of carbonate and barium sulfate have actually increased by 10%. Uh, also, the gross margins have gone up by by about 10%. Uh, but given the fact that uh, uh, you know this asset has been capitalized, uh, so there is a you know uh, impact of interest costs and higher debt to pay, which will continue uh, for the next two years. So just clarify here, 40% capacity utilization for barium precipitate and 100% capacity utilization for barium sulfate, 3,000 ton, right? That is a part of this quarter two numbers. Uh, I'd like to correct that. It's about 80% utilization of barium carbonate and oh. uh, and 35% uh, utilization of barium sulfate. Okay. okay. And my last question is on the QIP money raised. Uh, I could see uh, from the balance sheet uh, the PREF capital being repaid of about, uh, where is it, uh, of about 77 crores, right? Uh, other than that, how much cash is now in the balance sheet? And some cash seems to be in the, I don't know, how much is the cash in the balance sheet? What was the how was the QIP money utilized? Uh, good morning, Ritesh. Uh, this is Hanuman with you. Um, so, uh, the total debt, uh, including the long-term borrowings and the short-term borrowing, and the CRPS and unsecured loans from promoters entities, as of 31st March was 379 crores, which has come down to 315 crores now. There is no repayment. There is no repayment in the preferential uh, capital of the share uh, in the form of CRPS, so which is still uh, standing at 6.7 uh, crores as of 30th September. There is a repayment of unsecured loans of promoters, which was 26 crores as of 31st March, and that has been repaid. But there is no reduction of CRPS, which still stands as it is. Sorry, the total liability was 356 crores. Is now it was 379 crores as of 31st March, and now it is 315 CR. Okay, so let's say you repaid about 65 crores there. Yes. 
and balance money where where i can see the balance sheet um we have utilized those funds in working capital and uh, some portion of it is uh, staying in our uh, cash and cash equivalents so we had 21 crores of cash and cash equivalents as of 31st march which is now at 77 crores in the balance sheet okay and there is some other liability item also which is repaid at about 100 crores from 150 to 269 yeah the total amount that's repaid uh, is 150 crores so that includes uh, my long term borrowings as well as my short term borrowings um overall it looks at 63 crores because there is uh, infusion of capital towards the newly acquired barite beneficiation plant so effectively it looks at 63 crores but long term borrowings have come down by uh, nearly about 75 crores so our uh, term loan from banks specifically was 140 crores as of 31st march which has now come down to 98 crores at a consolidated level okay yeah thank you thank you thank you next question is from the line of sudhir beda from beda family office please proceed yeah season greeting sir and happy dantera to uh, you all uh, listen to you uh, sir my questions are like uh, you have stated in your uh, press note that uh, there is an increase in the fixed and conversion cost by a 5 crore during the year. This is an integration of newly commissioned barium sulfide plant or precipitated barium, right? So this is a one-time cost or uh, uh, it will recur in the future as well, this 5 crore? Hello? Yeah. Uh... Good morning, Sudhir ji. Wishing you happy Dhanteras and happy Diwali. Yeah, thank you. Um, regarding your query, uh, given the operating levels of the plant, uh, for especially barium sulfate, the yield, yields are not to the level what we have envisaged, given the lower operating level with the consumption of uh, raw materials as well as the electricity and energy are not to the optimum level yet. Uh, so you ask me, will this continue moving forward as we progress in terms of going up to 60-70% levels, we will achieve that uh, yield uh, as per the stoichiometry uh, and, and, and the energy norm. So I would say uh, even during the next quarter, there uh, they won't be an impact to the level what we have seen in quarter two, but it will be uh, much lesser than that. As the opportunity it to be. 55 to 60 percent level in quarter four. Yeah, so uh, as the volume goes up, this cost will be spreaded over the uh, okay. that higher volume, right? Yes. Uh, so, what's the sir, outlook on the newly commissioned plant for next uh, two, three quarters? As I understand that uh, uh, there is a great demand uh, because of the Chinese uh, are not great and the supply also stopped from here. So if you can show light on the barium sulfate product which you have commenced, uh, demand outlook and pricing for next two, three quarters. Demand outlook continues to remain strong as we uh, as we are seeing the uh, increase in imports on a Y on Y basis. Uh, the total imports already for the first nine months stand at 25, 26 thousand. Uh, versus in year last year it was at 20,000 tons. So we could, we could witness a significant growth, especially in the powder coating industry as well as the battery application as it acts as a cathode extender. Uh, right now, uh, our focus will be to work with uh, a big multinational where we are going through the approval because 70% of the market is uh, you know, in the hands of organized players. So there is an approval process which we are going through. We already received uh, approval and vendor goods from two major end users, and they have, they have. We are in discussion with them to start supplying from January 2024, and we are hoping to have 70% of their demand in the first year, and also to the mid to the lower 
uh, end of the uh, end users, uh, we are already supplying them on a regular basis. I mean, Chromium a vertical also, as you have stated in an earlier reply, that uh, you are able to now increase the pass on the increased cost of raw material to some account. So we believe that uh, this will lead to a margin expansion in coming quarters or how it will pan out? Um, I'd like to reiterate, uh, say that, you know, we continue to have the position, the leadership position in India. So that is continuing, uh, you know, it's not impacting our volume in any way. And as you see, we see Indian market still remains very resilient in spite of uh, some headwinds in the export market. Uh, definitely, uh, we are not an exception, at least in the space where we are operating. Exports, we are seeing uh, some sort of headwinds in terms of demand, uh, relatively more supply than last year. So there has been an impact, especially on the pricing and partially some volume. But in India, uh, we've actually uh, consciously decided to increase our presence. So we would also see in terms of, uh, you know, our mix, you know, we, we will see more sales the domestic versus exports this year. But that, uh, and that was a conscious decision made keeping also the margin uh, uh, assertiveness in that space. Mm -hmm. Great, sir. So thanks, sir, for the opportunity and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sunil Jain from Nirmal Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so my question relates to uh, Chrome, uh, Chrome Ore. Which form of Chrome Ore do you use? Means you use Chrome Ore or Ferrochrome? Hello. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Sunil. This is Siddhartha with you. Yeah. So we are using chemical grade chromo. We are not using any ferrochrome. Okay. And how much is the total requirement in a year at current capacity? It's quite sizable. We are talking uh, about more than a lakh ton, more than a lakh tons a year. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, about uh, the barium, uh, how's the outlook for uh, now demand from uh, tiles industry? Uh, as whether it is improving or how is the outlook? Uh, the, the tile industry in India is still, the demand remains quite resilient, in general, especially in the domestic market, and we have a sizable market share in that given our quality. Uh, well, outside India, we are seeing some slowdown uh, in general. Uh, I mean, uh, we are seeing an impact of 10 to 20 percent uh, in terms of demand, especially in this application. But in the other end use, when it, when it comes to water purification and bricks, it, uh, it remains quite steady in general. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Bajrang Bafna from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations for a decent set of numbers despite, uh, you know, the chemical, the entire chemical industry is going through a, a lot of disturbances and turmoil right now. So uh, just to, uh, my first question pertains to, uh, you know, the barium carbonate side, uh, you know, uh, why you know there is a sluggishness or uh, the kind of weakness that we are seeing in 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 that segment uh, if you could uh, you know uh, you know guide us uh, through some deeper understanding that that why that segment is not doing uh, that great uh, so that will be really helpful sir. good morning sir uh, it's mainly to do with the uh, globally how the construction industry and infra is doing uh, you know, uh, we, we, we are witnessing a slowdown, especially in China, where the real estate market is not doing quite well. So what we are seeing is uh, some additional capacity available for carbonate in China, which is actually putting some price pressure globally in general. Uh, parallelly, also, Europe, even the real estate industry, uh, is relatively sluggish compared to last year. 
that's what what yes that's what, that's the reason what we believe you know uh, the, uh, you know there has there is the demand is subdued at the moment Okay, so till the time we don't see the recovery in those real estate market, either in China or maybe in Europe, uh, probably uh, uh, this segment is going to be subdued. That is what the tracking point here. Uh, uh, it's it, it is to some extent, but what we are witnessing is Indian real estate market still continues to be quite uh, robust and relatively resilient in spite of this headwind. So our industry, domestic tile industry, especially in the Modi area. still going strong and becoming a net exporter uh, moving forward so we are seeing more volumes coming out of india so that will to uh, to some extent balance uh, overall volumes of take up got it sir and sir uh, what about uh, you know getting the opportunity of the largest chromium plant to getting shut down in europe uh, you know have we started seeing some sort of uh, order flows or inquiries for our company and how do we see uh, this opportunity to play out maybe over next couple of quarters now uh, it's a very good observation so we uh, so this particular uh, factory uh, in europe they make a very specialty grade oxide So we are in touch with those customers uh, constantly, and we are, you know, working on their specifications in general. So it's I would say it's a uh, it's in on R and D phase and in approval process at the moment. So we are hoping definitely to see some good uh, uh, order flow for this particular uh, product derivative of chromium from Q1 of next year. Okay. Got it, sir. And just, sir, finally, you know, uh, the 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 Q first half was little bit, uh, you know, we could say muted for our company. Can we expect uh, second half to be better uh, than than the first half, and maybe going into next financial year, the kind of capacities that we have built up, uh, it is fair to assume a 15-20 percent kind of growth uh, uh, in 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 maybe in volume is something which is doable for us. If you could just guide on that, it would be really helpful. Ah oh, well, we are uh, working in the direction, and we are quite hopeful. But we should be also mindful about how the export market is doing, and we are definitely keeping our fingers crossed to, you know, uh, in terms of revenues, in terms of EBITDA margin, uh, you know, for for the company as well as the investor, it has to be much better than H1. Got it. Thank you, sir, and all the very best, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Anil Sarin from Centrum. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, Hanuman and Siddharth. Uh, I, I wanted to know um, some details about this uh, backward integration that you have done in Chrome uh, Ore uh, and uh, and uh, beneficiation. What is the uh, uh, what is the price difference that you will be able to achieve? Like. Uh, uh, like how much has been spent on this, and uh, how much of saving on an annual basis do you expect from this uh, chrome beneficiation uh, beneficiation plant? Uh, good morning, Mr. Anil. Thank you for your question. It's very early to right now talk about the cost savings that we will achieve. Uh, the main intent behind this uh, procurement or this acquisition uh, would be to look at a long term supply. of promo so then there is no uh, correlation between uh, uh, the the changes in the promo prices um, and uh, the end use market so we would have a consistent supply of promo uh, without any volatilities on the pricing side because today if you observe the promo pricing globally um, is correlated more to the stainless steel industry and that is one industry that we do not cater to so our end use market is more determined based on uh, you know the 12 applications that we sell into but the raw material side is more uh, uh, correlated to the stainless steel industry with this acquisition uh, it clearly uh, demarcates the thin line and uh, then we would have control on the prices of chromo uh, consistent supply and from 
today's consumption of nearly uh, 100,000 tons on an annual basis. As we go forward, we are looking at nearly 200,000 tons in three to four years from now. So this consistent supply will help us, you know, meet our expectations, uh, meet our uh, manufacturing uh, requirements seamlessly. It's a similar benefit that we got uh, when we uh, earlier envisaged the soda ash plant nearly uh, four to five years ago. At that point of time, soda ash prices were just about 20 rupees a kg. And uh, there's not uh, a huge incentive in the short term. But in the longer term, we can see today that soda ash prices have gone from 20 of, uh, from a historical average of 20 rupees a kg to a current pricing of nearly 32, 33 rupees a kg. And the same backward integration plant that we have set up is now giving us uh, uh, much more higher profits and uh, improved our overall gross profit. So that's how we are modeling it, looking at it from a long-term perspective. And as we move forward and as we do some more work, we'll have more idea about the clear cost advantage that we will have from this acquisition. Okay, uh, thanks. That helps. I have a follow-on uh, question. Uh, you know, talking about the quarter gone by, uh, at, I, I couldn't fully understand in some of your earlier answers. Uh, what I thought, what I think I heard was that volume has been up 14%, uh, but the profits are down by a certain percentage on a YOY basis. Part of the reason is uh, you're saying that the prices have come off. Uh, the, of the derivatives of the end product, whereas the raw material prices have gone up. So that should have reflected itself in the gross margin contraction. But even that is not there. So it would help uh, all of us if you could elaborate a little bit on the overall volume, uh, raw material price, as well as the end product prices across both barium as well as chromium uh, derivatives of yours. Uh Thank you for your question. So uh, let us talk about vert one vertical first, that is chromium chemicals. Um, so last quarter we had seen a maintenance shutdown due to which our overall operating levels are nearly about 70% uh, on a base of 80,000 tons of sodium dichromate. Uh, there is no maintenance now and uh, there's no maintenance likely to be in the second half of this financial year. So we have operated the uh, capacities at nearly about 80% plus levels in the second quarter of chromium chemicals, due to which we have seen higher volume and uh, uh, production in the chromium segment. Um, on the blended realization side, we have seen uh, a decline of nearly about 15% compared to last quarter. And that is where you see that, uh, you know, there is uh, not the entire gain that we could see from the volume increase. But overall, the spreads are intact and uh, that's how it's visible on the gross profit at absolute level. So at a standalone level, we made a gross profit of 112 crores this quarter compared to 116 crores in the last quarter. Uh, in the barium side, uh, overall the volumes are uh, uh, slightly better than last quarter. Uh, since we had uh, uh, production... Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry uh, Anuman, just one thing. Last quarter, when you say it means the June quarter or the previous year September quarter? No. Uh, when I said last quarter, it's uh, the June quarter. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Please carry on. Yes. On the barium side, we have seen uh, slightly better volumes because of uh, production coming from precipitated barium sulfate, and uh, that has led to uh, you know marginal increase uh, in overall gross profitability because precipitated barium sulfate is a uh, 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 it's slightly better product in terms of profitability for us. Uh, but on an overall level, uh, we have seen uh, a bit of softness on the barium carbonate side. So at a gross profit, at an absolute gross profit level, we saw that in Q1 FY24, we delivered nearly about 22 crores of gross profit in Vishnu barium, which was about 23 crores in Q2 FY24. So the difference is not much. And that's how on a console level, our gross profit remains at 139 crores in Q2 FY24. Like I said, which is in line with 139.2 crores achieved in Q1 FY24. On your second question about the profit, the net profit of the company uh, uh, 
at 24 crores in Q2 FY24 compared to uh, 29 crores in Q1 FY24. Uh, the 16% decline is because of two factors. One is our higher depreciation cost, which has gone up from uh, 7.1 crores in Q1 FY24 to 8.9 crores in Q2 FY24. And uh, our uh, fixed and conversion cost, which has gone up from 88 crores in Q1 FY24 to 93 crores in Q2 FY24. So that's uh, near about uh, 7 crores difference that we saw at the PBT level. And hence it translated into a 16% decline at the PAC level. Okay, okay, thank you. That, that, uh, that, that's a very good explanation. Last, if I may, uh, going forward, I mean, whatever I'm hearing from the commentary, uh, there is, uh, I mean, we, we, we do sell, I mean, our, our international revenue is more than 50% of our total. And international conditions are uh, uh, not that great. Specifically, uh, construction uh, is, 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 is doing badly and it is expected to do very badly, uh, whether it's in China or it's in US or in uh, Europe. So uh, I guess uh, the domestic business will have to sort of step up and take up some of the load. Uh, so given the international situation being what it is, uh, what is the overall outlook? We'll get a, we'll clearly get a benefit from this value added barium uh, plant that we have got uh, for sure. That will be a benefit. We will get some benefit from raw materials, uh, uh, you know, on both sides now, whether chrome or, uh, uh, you know, be right, uh, having under our control, that is a benefit. But demand could be soft internationally as we look, uh, as we go forward. So if you can give a general commentary about the second half, uh, as well as the year going ahead, that would be very helpful. Uh, uh, good morning, Mr. Anil Siddharth with you. Uh, that's a very, uh, very good observation in general. Uh, but again, I'd like to bring uh, to your notice that you know the idea of the company, uh, even in uh, uh, <coughs> subsidiaries, to work on a flexible product mix, which we are doing in general. Uh, so, let's say the key starting raw material for uh, barium carbonate or barium sulfate, I mean, on an N plus one basis, will remain the same. Given the how the you know since we have enough capacity even on the barium sulfate, uh, as we would see, uh, let's say the paint and the coatings industry, uh, uh, if, uh, since we are witnessing good demand, overall growth is, remains quite stable and resilient. We will focus more on barium sulfate and barium hydroxide, and also we are parallelly working on another derivative called strontium carbonate. Uh, as we move forward, so uh, I think uh, we are very, um, we are working very closely with our team to develop more flexible product mix within the assets we have created in order to you know uh, handle this kind of headwinds. Okay, great, without, great. Thank without, you. Without impacting the volumes. Okay, uh, great. Uh, thanks for that explanation. Look forward to a uh, to a great future ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy Diwali to you and your family. And happy Diwali. Uh, happy Diwali to you too. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Darshil from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening, sir. Hope I'm audible. Hello. Yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning, sir. Yeah, so just uh, wanted to know, sir, uh, how do we take FY24 as a year? Maybe it's a year of consolidation uh, where afterwards in FY25 we can, you know, compensate for FY24 growth. Would that be a fair way to look at it? Because we can expect international markets to, you know, maybe help us back with a new plant also coming in. So, my point is, how do we look at FY25 and maybe beyond? Like, can we, because we had some margin decline right now in Q2, which for the new plant, we'll have some type of stabilization. So, FY25, can we get back to, you know, our aim of maybe, you know, 19% EBITDA and, you know, 
percent of revenue do we see in FY twenty five? That's the main thing. Because FY twenty four, I don't know. Will we be able to do what we done in revenue in FY twenty three? How would it? How do we take this year as of such? Because there were a lot of macro factors also. So just wanted to you know get us your sense on it. Good morning. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, yes, the next six months are uh, going to be uh, a derivative of macro factors. But uh, um, as we see that, you know, as we enter into the new calendar year and subsequently the new financial year, there will be certain areas which will work in our favor. Uh, predominantly, the uh, you know. Uh, the 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 commissioning of precipitated barium sulfate plant. I mean that would operate at nearly about 60% in Q4, and as we enter into the new financial year, it will operate at uh, nearly about 70 to 80%. And also the barium carbonate plant is expected to generate higher volumes as we see the construction activity improve at least uh, after the next couple of quarters. So both of them will lead to better profitability for a subsidiary company, and that will reflect in a consolidated financials. That's what we are estimating. On the chromium chemical side, uh, there are a few things that we are already working on. We are working on further reducing the cost of power um, through adoption of solar power, and uh, that over a period of time will help us, uh, you know, uh, reduce our fixed costs uh, that we are incurring right now. And uh, the backward integration plant uh, of soda ash that started in January 2022, um, on a uh, we'll we'll complete two years of that plant in uh, December, and next year we are uh, hoping to operate that plant uh, at nearly at 80% to 85% utilization Q4 onwards, and 90% from Q1 of next financial year onwards. So that will further improve our uh, uh, cost savings. And subsequently, gross profits. So these are the areas that clearly indicate that yes, the next calendar year, as well as the next financial year, uh, looks better. And give and take, if the macro factors support us, it will be much better. But the micro factors at a company level that we are doing will further, uh, you know, improve our profitability next year. Yes. Uh, that helps. So, so just to summarize, maybe in FY24, we'll maintain the hundred that we are currently mm -hmm. at of H1, and when the growth, we maybe you know come to the more in you know FY first quarter that, or maybe at quarter four, we'll come to a better picture for it. Because for any guidance you would like to give for FY25. Um, right now, it would be too early for us to give a guidance for FY25. But uh, we take your observations and we keep the investors posted. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. So, uh, thank you so much. So that's all from my side. All the best. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kaushik Kani from Abans Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Good morning, Siddharth and Abans. Uh, am I audible? Uh, sir, some echo is coming from your line. Yeah, is this better? Yes, this is better. Please go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, what we have been seeing in the press release is uh, that gross margins over last uh, couple of years, almost four to five years, have been steady at around 45, 46 uh, percent. So what sort of scope do we have in terms of increasing this margin? A. And B, basically, uh, if at all, and let's say next one year, if we buy a reserve mine, uh, would that lead to what uh, sort of, uh, you know, margin expansion due to that? Uh, good morning, Mr. Dhani. This is Siddharth with you. Uh, well, our ideal folk, uh, our folk, our intent, and our, uh, I really we like to focus on improving the gross margin mainly by focusing on flexible product needs as we move forward. Uh, we're we'll, we'll definitely going to leverage that, and also what uh, you know, also I've uh, you know shared in the commentary that we are seeing the chromo prices cooling down a little bit. We already seen 
some few few drops in the last few weeks. We are uh, we expecting few more to come, you know, by end of this quarter. So that will definitely help to improve the gross margins. Hopefully, get back to the levels where we were at forty six percent during the Q one. Okay, and also parallelly, uh, and also parallelly, you know, uh, with this Chromore mine acquisition, we definitely keep our gross margins over fifty percent. This would be our ideal target in the years to come. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, let's say till the time uh, if uh, there is uh, no mine acquisition, then do you think this forty-six margin percent is like say your peak margin? Uh, well, uh, it depends on how the other you know value add derivatives uh, will help uh, will help to improve the gross margin. But otherwise, yeah, uh, pretty much we'll be looking at forty-six, forty-seven percent. No, we will definitely improve in the quarter four. Given the fact that uh, you know chromo prices are coming down, and whereas the finished product prices have kind of flattened or going up marginally. Uh, okay, and uh, a little bit uh, bookkeeping, but I just wanted to understand on an annual basis, uh, uh, how will our capacity increase shape up? Let's say 20, uh, 24 or 23 or 25 and 25 or 24 for chromium. Uh, let, well, I mean, right now it's very difficult for us to give a timeline. Uh, but as we progress, I'll be uh, able to throw more light towards and you know, not this financial year on when this new capacity will come online. But let me tell you that uh, the capex is in progress uh, at the moment. So this FY24, uh, uh, let's say, assuming the expansion is going on, uh, it will lead to what sort of capacity? We are looking at uh, about 15 to 20 percent increase in capacity. 15 to 20 percent on 70 or 80 sorry yeah. on 80 thousand ton yeah and what about barium barium I I think I mean uh, the capacity is already there we are uh, working on ramping it up and getting it to a 80 percent operating level yeah which is 35 currently yeah. which is at 45 currently 45. With the combination of barium carbonate and barium salt. Yeah, 30-30, right? Uh, precipitated is 30, and this one is 30. No, it's 50-30. 50 and 30. Okay, so PBS would be 30. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, once the fully operational, or let's say at an optimal capacity utilization, precipitated barium sulfate should add uh, to what percentage of your barium revenues on a fully operational basis? Uh, to about fifty percent. Fifty percent on the current growth rate, on the current now. Correct. Uh, okay. And finally, uh, any capex declared for the next year? No, not yet. Okay. Uh, wishing you a happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you. Wishing you a happy Diwali. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rinkin Shah from Umkara Capital. Please proceed. Uh, hi, Siddharth. Uh, so I just wanted to understand how is supply side reacting in barium carbonate. So we are seeing some sort of softness in this vertical. Uh, you know, you alluded to demand side construction activity slow down globally, but is there any sort of uh, supply side coming up which is uh, adding more to it? No, we are not seeing that. Or at least we are not hearing that uh, in general. I don't think there's any additional capacity which has come up and you know, uh, you know, put a lot of supply uh, or availability in the market. It's just in general demand slowdown outside India. What we are witnessing. Okay. And secondly, uh, you know, I think in the last uh, 18 months we are used to seeing the. Sodium dichromate prices moving in tandem with the chromol prices, but I think in the last six months we have sort of seen a break in the correlation. So you know, would you you know help us explain why that is happening? Ah, uh, well, it was uh, kind of what I mean. Uh, in general, chemical prices co cooling down, like we said, uh, chromol uh, 
the, the major end use industry 90% is into ferrochrome which thereby goes in stainless steel so it has very little to do with the chemical industry how the chemical industry is doing uh, and it is, uh, so the impact uh, on the chemical industry or the pricing pricing methodology doesn't play a very big role for the producers okay. Uh, whereas in general, given the fact that there has been a slowdown, especially in the construction and leather industry, uh, you know, it's a combination of lower demand and the raw, raw metal price, price increase. So there has been an impact. Okay. So we expect like some sort of reversal in H2 maybe. Sorry, please repeat that. So I'm saying the chromium verticals, they're expecting some sort of reversal in what has happened? Yeah, I mean, like I've, uh, you know, uh, shared with with everyone that, you know, we are already seeing the chromo prices cooling down on account of stainless steel industry in China, uh, and especially the stainless steel is also going to construction industry. There's already, they are already witnessing the slowdown, you know, as we speak. So this, uh, we are seeing a uh, good amount of uh, cooling off going to happen in terms of pricing uh, in the next few months. So, that, uh, so it doesn't mean that the prices of raw metal come down and we have to again readjust our finished product pricing because that has already been done. So either it will remain subdued or we, we will definitely make an effort to increase the finished product pricing and focus on the product mix where we, we, are, we will see a better gross margin. Okay, thanks for that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rohit Sinha from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the follow-up. Uh, just now, uh, one on the export and domestic mix. So how was the mix in this quarter versus the last quarter? Domestic sales were 55% of consolidated sales, and export sales were 45%. Uh, and uh, what is the last quarter? Yeah, this is this is due to FY24. In Q1 FY24, domestic was 53% of total sales, and exports was 47% of total sales. Okay. And secondly, would it be possible just to give a brief uh, uh, breakup in terms of uh, industry exposure we have, like construction, paint, and, uh, and especially if in paint possible to uh, give an uh, outline on the automobile exposure? Um, from Hello? Hello. Uh, yes, can you repeat your question? So, in terms of industry exposure, would it be possible just to give a break up like uh, which industry is contributing to our revenue, how much, and especially like in construction, paint industry, and in paint also, if at uh, all possible for the uh, automobile exposure? Um, on a standalone level, uh, pharmaceuticals is nearly about 18% of our turnover, with electroplating and uh, which comprises of Decorative and hard plating is nearly about 8%. Uh, pigments and dyes is about 13%. Wood preservatives, uh, wood preservative chemicals is nearly 9%. Refractory, refractory bricks which goes into furnaces and uh, uh, plants in general is about 9% of our total uh, business. Uh, uh, leather uh, and allied uh, chemicals is nearly about 20%. The remaining 10% uh, goes into industries like uh, soaps and detergents, textiles, glass, uh, automobiles, and battery chemicals. And on the barium front, uh, you know, it's nearly 50% uh, comes from uh, ceramics and tiles, that is in barium carbonate. And then we have uh, the caustic soda brine purification industry that comprises of nearly 15% of our turnover. Uh, we have uh, the construction uh, chemicals, paints, and dyes, which is nearly 40% of our turnover. 40% of our barium uh, revenue, right? Yes, of the barium. At a console level, it would at a console level it would be overall, you know, about uh, less than 10%. 
got it got it thank you thank you very much and uh, best of luck and happy diwali to all thank you ladies and gentlemen we will take this as the last question for the day i now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments um i'd like to thank everyone for uh, joining us and uh, asking the right questions and you know giving us a chance to uh, share our uh, observations with you in general uh, wish you all a very very happy diwali and a prosperous prosperous new year ahead uh, from the entire vishnu capital fam if you have any questions or queries uh, please write to us on investors@vishnukempels.com uh, we will uh, come back to you as soon as possible thank you everyone thank you on behalf of mk global financial service that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines